All right, so to kick things off, I'm going to just do our typical Rails new command. If you don't have Rails installed, definitely check my earlier videos about how to do that. You definitely need that to get going. So if you're just stumbling upon this series, I definitely recommend doing the ones prior to this, just so you have some knowledge of where I'm going with it. Um, some things I speed up in the videos, so I just want you to be aware of what's going on. Anyway, let's do a new app. I'm gonna call this Flanger, if I can spell. And we don't need to pass any kind of flags. We can if we want to, but I'm just gonna omit them for now for clarity. So we'll do that. It'll create all the files you need and run bundle install, which fetches all the gems that are prepended by default. So I'll CD into that directory, flanger. And I'm gonna clear my console. Command K is what I use here. So uh, let's open this one. So I'm gonna reference my demo project that you saw me having done before. So that's just something that will save us both time in the end. So this one is called Flanger Demo and the other one's just gonna be called Flanger. So hopefully that's clear. I would say the first order of business is to install the gems we really wanna have in the project. And I d I'm just gonna do this by a copy and paste method simply because uh, it'll take way too long for me to just Google everything and you can do the same if you want to, if you're following along. I am using Rails 515. If your version's different, you might pay attention to which gems you're using. It's up to you. So outside of the typical ones that come with your new Rails app, which is everything above this line and some below, these, this group here is the ones I've actually added. So I'm gonna add those to my current project. And we're making use of Bulma, which is a CSS framework I like to use just for demo purposes. In any real app I'm gonna use in the wild, I'm gonna probably roll my own styles. Bulma just makes it easier for me. Um, just kind of showing by example and also learning. So you can use Bootstrap or Foundation if you want, up to you guys. Of course, simple form is a good, good rule to have. It kind of just generates simpler forms outside of the typical Rails forms which of course work. I just have always used simple form. Devise is gonna be our out of the box user authentication system, which is awesome. And we're gonna make use, I think of, well actually, I don't know if we do make use of the Gravatar image tag. I'm gonna go ahead and install it just in case I need it. I don't know that I will. But then we're also using a image upload service called Carrier Wave. There's another one out there called Paperclip that's pretty popular. You can use whichever one you want. I've kind of migrated towards Carrier Wave. It seems a little simpler to set up and more extendable. You be the judge there if you want to use that. With that, we can generate different thumbnails. So Carrier Wave requires a gem called Mini Magic, of which we'll get into and how to set that up later on. To top of that, in our development environment, I like to use Guard. So this is our current project. Let's see, Flanger, Flanger demo. So there's a few right here, better errors, guard, and guard live reload I like to use. It's more or less just a front end workflow helper. Um, better errors gives us better errors when something happens that didn't go quite as planned. The guard is kind of like a task runner for Ruby, more or less like goal per if you come from that frame of mindset and then guard live reload just kind of hooks into the live reload web extension I have in my browser and refreshes the page as things change so all good all great so with those basically added to our gem file we can go ahead and uh, run bundle you can also just type bundle install if you want to this should do the same thing so you'll see simple forms installed um, let's see what else guard all those so with that comes some setup some of these require definite setup let's see device is a definite one it's usually just good to reference the github page makes it way easier a simple forms another I'm just gonna pull these up so I have them in front of me because I can never remember what I'm actually supposed to write so we got, let's do simple form first. So Rails generate simple form install. And it should do its thing. Here you can pass 
if you want to use bootstrap or foundation again if you're using those so pay attention to that if you want we're not going to use that because i don't really prefer those so next we can do device yeah let's do device so with device you need to first run its generator i think too let's go find where that's at yep rails generate device install before we do that though we need a we're going to need a route a root path so let's actually first do a controller where we just have an index path to to go to to start with we're probably not going to use this in the end but it's a good place to start so rails controller so i'm calling the controller store and we're creating an index action on that so we run that it generates all these files you don't really need all these files but also not really concerned at this point so with that we have a new controller store controller here which is great and on it our index action so the reason i wanted to do that primarily is to go into our routes file and configure that to be our root path so root index or excuse me store index so now we have that as the home page once we boot our server when we get to that but I do this mainly because I know device is going to ask me to set a root path. So let's do that generation now for device. And this, I, you don't know all this out of the box. It took me several apps and trial and error to figure all this stuff out. So don't worry if it's kind of disheartening. <laughs> so let's do that. Here's all the stuff you got to do now. So we need to configure a mailer which goes into our dev development environment. So I'll go to config environments development. So I just always kind of put a little comment. Hey, this is for device. Not that I'll mess with that again, but you never know. And here's where that root path needed to be. So there's that. And then we can also generate our views. I'm probably just going to copy from our other project though. Um, you can do the same because we're gonna extend device to include a name field for our app. I just like to do that because I don't really like to use an email as a username. So in our views, create a directory or just copy over everything I have from the actual source. So let me find that real quick. Okay, so I copied those files over. We're gonna actually append this um, notice and alert actions into our layout file coming up. So I'll do that next. And then we also need to generate a controller so that we can append our app to have a name field when a user signs up. And that's more or less just extending device to be cooler than it really is out of the box. So. That's gonna entail creating a controller. Actually, first we need to generate a user model. So Rails will need to do that. And again, I need to go back to that device gem again. I forgot one thing, which is the main thing. You need to actually generate a model based off of the device library. So Rails generate device user is what's gonna be what we run. And this will be uppercase, just the convention there based on the model. So this will do its thing. And we need to run Rails DB migrate after that. Cool. So if you really want to confirm what just happened, you can go into your database, assuming you're on SQLite, and you can see a new users table created based on what uh, device comes with out of the box, which is pretty cool saves a ton of time. It also adds this route path, so device for users, which is a ton of different paths that we'll use to sign in, sign out, create users, uh, destroy users, all that stuff. One thing we wanna do though, is append this to use a different controller when a user signs up so we can pass the name field I'm gonna add as a parameter that is like whitelisted, so to speak. So it just basically says, hey, device, let this user add a name to their account as well when they sign up. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, it will once we 
actually create the views and make them work. So what I want to do is extend this to use a different controller. And to do that, you can pass controllers colon and open a block here. And then we'll want to pass in registrations. And then I want to call it registrations. So this is dependent on what you call that controller. I think I spelled that right. Yeah, so then we need to create that controller. And it needs to actually be called, I didn't mean to hit enter there, registrations underscore controller Ruby. Cool. So in this file, we need to define a class that's called registrations controller. And it's going to extend from device. This is where it's tricky. And we'll do an end. I don't know why this isn't setting syntax Ruby. There we go. So that's defining the class. You'll see it's just extending from the device library. So that's how that's working. And next, we need to create a private area and below that we'll create two um, definitions which will be sign up params and these come with device so don't think you just have to know what these are out of the box there's a guide on their actual repo if you want to know how to actually do this without me telling you and this is the one where we're going to actually permit the name and then, of course, the other fields that are already associated with device from the start. So, so we'll do a similar thing down here when we want to edit or update an account. So we're going to require the user model. And then this is going to permit those things. your current password to make those changes okay so that being done we should be able to create accounts at this point since we've added our views we've added the controllers our routes are set up to use that new registrations controller and I think everything's all set so we can verify that by going to rails server and we'll go to the browser this is gonna refresh and not have anything there. But then we can go to users, uh, let's see, sign up. And find method name. Oh, okay, so we need to create a migration that adds name to our users table. So let's do that next. Let's close that. So we'll do rails generate. Let me clear this so you guys can see it. Rails generate migration add name to users and you could just put name and it's a string this should do what we want just to verify i like to verify go to our migrations here's our column on the users table we're adding this of the string type so that looks good and we can do rails db migrate done so hopefully now we can do this again. There we go. So now we have a name field. And we can, I guess I could go ahead and try to sign up. Cool. That worked because it redirected back to the path. We've got insertion here with our encrypted password so it did did do what we wanted fantastic so that's a big hurdle to get over right from the start um, the next thing we want to do is kind of get our style set up and everything else so it's looking better as we make this app come to life 
So I already have our Bulma stack installed, so I can just go and rename our application CSS file to SCSS, and then you can do an app import Bulma to give that at least an initial start. So you can see that things kind of change when we go to the server again. The fonts and stuff should update. Yep, okay, cool. So that's good. Um, there'll be more styles that we add as we go. One last thing I wanna do is update the actual layout just to get that in, in order because it's pretty bare right now, as you can see. So I'm gonna reference my other project and in that layout file, there's gonna be some stuff we can't really use yet because it doesn't exist. So bear with me there, but we'll use what we can. So let's go to views in that project, layouts, application. I'll just copy and paste this over and we'll omit things that we aren't gonna use. Double check what's here and what shouldn't be. This is gonna to have to go away for now. I think that should do it. So we should have at least a framework to go with right now, good deal. Um, we'll be adding some styles and stuff as we go, but we have, you see our account set up, we can go to our edit actual user account, um, change our password, all that stuff there. We can log in and log out. So when you log out, this shows because we're checking if a user is indeed signed in here. And if they are, the things here show, and if not, the sign up and sign in show. And that's just stuff this comes with device, so that's just a nice little current user thing you can grab and check and see if a user's signed in first. And these paths come with device as well, and I can prove that by just doing a let's duplicate our shell here. Reels or what is it? Rake routes. And it shows everything so far. This gets pretty long in your terminal, so if you ever wanted to just go in the browser and look at this, you can do, I think, localhost, rails, info, routes, yeah, you see a history there. And this should show you everything as well if you want it in the actual browser. Up to you how you want to do that. So cool. So out of the box, we're, we're basically ready to roll. Um, there's some, of course, refinements I'll make to all the views and everything as we go, but the next order of business is getting our actual model set up, uh, which are gonna be called instruments. So I'll do that in the very next video.